Hello and welcome to Aqua Rach. Today I am making a cute little birthday card for my little sister Carrie. She turned 21 years old yesterday actually and we didn't get to go meet up for her birthday because of the blizzard and I actually didn't know I was going to make her a card. I probably should make cards for everybody all the time because then I'll get really good at it and I think it's just nice but my mom let me know that she was feeling bad because she had forgotten to buy a birthday card when she was in town she kind of lives out in the country so I said hey I'll make one so then it's just a matter of what kind of card is it going to be so as I said she's turning 21 which you know kind of a big deal because that's when you can drink. But I didn't want to make some, you know, obnoxious, raunchy card like what you typically see for 21-year-olds. I still wanted it to be kind of cute. I mean, she is my little sister and she's a lot younger than me, so I think of her still as a kid even though she's 21. So, I decided that this card would feature her little dog, Wanda. And Wanda is having a little too good of a time at Carrie's 21st birthday party. Things are getting a little carried away. So she is going up with the balloons and she is a little bit tipsy. She's got a beer. <laughs> so I thought this would be kind of cute. And I'm going to keep it really, really simple. I'm going to use some India ink to do the line work on this card. And so yeah, this is just the sketch. And now I'm going to use my carbon paper to try to transfer it onto the watercolor paper that I've cut and folded to be, a, I think it's a 4 inch by 6 inch or 6 inch by 4 inch, whatever, card. For some reason, the carbon paper didn't work very well, even though I was applying a lot of pressure. I actually thought my lines were going to be really, really dark. And I was pretty shocked to look and see that I could barely see any lines, but they were there enough for me to get by. So, yeah, I don't like to tear pages out of my sketchbook if I can help it. So it made it a little bit difficult to lift up the page and actually check just because of the way that I was holding everything in place with this tape. And the nice thing about creating a little sketch for yourself to work off of is that you can have lots of construction lines like what I used for the lettering. I wanted the lettering just to be really simple. I am going to actually put her name on the card down on the bottom. I didn't do that at first. And I'll just wing that. And when I work on cards, I try to prevent them from flying open while I'm working on them. So I use just a little bit of my painter's masking tape roll it up and kind of put it inside the card just to hold it shut while I am painting and inking. Alright, so I'm going to be using my India ink and I'm just going to do all the simple outlines and I'm going to try to keep my lines really clean. I really want this card to be kind of minimalist and cute. That's just sort of my style when it comes to cards. I like to just have a nice clean white background, which I was a little bit frustrated because not only did my carbon paper not really transfer my lines that well, but it also left a bunch of smudges outside the areas where I was even applying pressure. I'm not sure what is up with that, but basically with the carbon paper, carbon is a lot like just the graphite that is in a typical pencil. It is a little bit more stubborn. So once my ink is all dry, I'll just go in with an eraser and try to pick up any smudges. I know you can't really see them here in the video, but they kind of bugged me just because I really wanted to have that nice, clean, white background. And then here's where I decided to add her name. So I'm just winging it. I'm kind of just using my own handwriting anyway, so no worries. And her name is short, so that helps for sure. And 
And as I'm doing these lines, I'm loading a little bit less ink into my dip pen than I normally do, just to make sure that my lines are all really uniform. Even though I'm going to have to reload the pen a little bit more frequently, it's fine because this isn't like a real extensive illustration or anything like that, so it goes pretty quickly even if I am reloading more frequently. The biggest thing when inking is just to make sure that you are working throughout the drawing in an order that makes sense so that you don't risk accidentally putting your hand into wet ink and smudging it. So that's why I'm not really just working like from bottom to top or top to bottom. I'm kind of moving all over the place just to let certain places dry and settle before I move on to another place where my hand might get in the way. And always making sure to kind of shake off my dip pen whenever I reload it just to make sure there isn't any glob of ink stuck in there that as soon as it hits the paper it's just going to go all over the place. I didn't have my little hair dryer plugged in. It was literally right next to me, um, but I was being lazy. So I'm just going to wait for this to dry really thoroughly. So I'll just cut that part so that you don't have to literally watch ink dry. I got some ink on my mixing palette, so I've got to clean that up before I add any watercolor to it. But yeah, if you're working with ink, even if it's waterproof, like India ink typically is waterproof, you still just want to make sure that it has time to thoroughly dry so that you aren't applying water and watercolor on top of ink that is still a little bit wet. And I'm being really careful about erasing so that I am kind of erasing over the lettering because that's the first area that I did with ink. And so I'm relatively confident that that was dry. But otherwise, I'm being really careful not to even erase over some of those lines that are a little bit more fresh, just so I don't accidentally smudge any ink. All right, so you didn't even notice the cut there, but everything is dry. And my sister's favorite colors are like turquoise and blues, I think. I think. Last I knew, anyway. So I'm going to use those colors throughout this little card. And I want the balloons to be kind of just modeled and have some colors merging together. So I'm just going to stick with blues. I've got the turquoise. I've got the ultramarine blue. I think for the third balloon, I used thalo blue and a little bit of permanent rose, but it was still going to be mostly blue. So wanted just a little bit of variation in the balloons and then also on the hat on the dog's head. So yeah, this that I'm mixing here is going to be thalo blue and just a little bit of permanent rose. And again, I just kind of want the colors to be very watery, very mottled. I don't really want them to dry and look really uniform or anything like that. And I did use maybe too much water up here in the balloons, so I have to pick some of it up. Some of the color went rogue a little bit outside the lines, but that's fine. Sometimes if I have watercolor and it goes outside the line somewhere, then I'll just kind of do it in another spot on the card or illustration just to make it look like I did it on purpose and it's just there to be kind of cute and charming, which of course it is. So I'm using my paper towel here just to gently pick up some color that went rogue a little bit more than I wanted. It's still outside the lines a little bit, but just by very, very gently dipping a corner of my paper towel into the water that went over the line, I was able to pick up a lot of the pigment. So it's barely even noticeable. 
And here I am just picking up some of that excess water, so kind of drying off the bristles of my brush on the paper towel, and then just dipping the bristles into the excess water so that the bristles will just kind of pick up that extra water. And even though it won't hurt anything to have that much water on the illustration, it just makes it take a lot longer to dry and increases the risk of, you know, making some kind of mistake with it. And then I'm going to kind of just stick with the same color scheme for the little hat. Keep it very simple. And then for the dog, I have this raw sienna. But if I didn't have that color, what I would use, I would just kind of mix up an orange with a yellow and a red. And then I would add just a little tiny bit of like ultramarine blue or cobalt blue into it just to tone it down a little bit. And then you'll get a color that's really close to this raw sienna color. And I also kind of want the dog to be a little bit mottled and, you know, not, not just completely uniform and smooth. Just to have a little bit of texture. I think that looks kind of cute. So, yeah, just going to keep the dog really simple. I might add in just a little bit more color. Like, whatever color I end up using for the beer, I might just add a few splotches, a few drops of that. I guess I'm going to go with that warm yellow. I think my warm yellow is called New Gamboge, but yeah, I think any yellow will do it. I really didn't feel like anything in this little illustration required too much mixing or complex colors. I really just want to keep it very simple. See, so yeah, I'm just going to drop in some of this yellow into the dog. It won't even really be noticeable, but just to add maybe a little bit more texture. And now my dogs are getting a little bit riled up, of course. So good thing I'm just about finished with this cute little birthday card. I don't know if you've noticed this, but every time I go and look at cards lately, it just seems like they're really kind of obnoxious and raunchy and like nothing that I would want to give to someone I would actually like. So it's kind of a struggle just to find cards that really kind of fit my style of like relating to people and giving. I don't know what's up with that. Even like when I go look on Etsy, it you know, cards that people make, they're all just kind of obnoxious. I don't really understand that. Maybe I'm just getting old though. <laughs> That's okay. All right, so this is it. I'm gonna just get everything cleaned up, which I magically just did. And here it is. I really like how it turned out. Let me get it in focus. I like how modeled the balloons are and it's just kind of cute and goofy. I made the dog's eyes different sizes, like maybe he's a little bit buzzed or I'm sorry, she, her name's Wanda. So yeah, I hope that my sister likes this and I hope you enjoyed. Thanks.